Stable, prosperous and neutral, Switzerland, which lies at the very heart of Europe, has until recently shunned membership of international political organisations, preferring successfully to go it alone. But on the 6th of December, the country goes to the polls to vote in what some have called the most important referendum of the century, to determine the shape of its future, should it integrate with Europe or not. The Swiss will decide on whether to join the 19-nation European Economic Area, which will link the seven European Free Trade Association countries with the European Community. This would form a gigantic free trade zone of 380 million people. Within the area, there will be free movement of capital, goods, labour and services, starting in 1993. But many Swiss feel that closer ties with Europe would bring about the erosion of their independence. They believe it threatens long-held beliefs and traditions, such as neutrality and direct democracy, which have ensured the security and affluence of their country, which brings together four different cultures and language groups into a federal state. European integration is an issue that's splitting the country. Switzerland needs access to this new single market which is in the making. We have always participated in European free trade and there's no reason why now that uh, a single market is being created we shouldn't participate in it. When uh, the Schweiz the Mehrwert beitritt, then have we a political advantage and wirtschaftliche. Politisch, we verlieren an Souveränität. Wir müssen fremdes Recht übernehmen, das wir nicht mehr selber bestimmen können. Und äh, die Macht in unserem Land verschiebt sich vom Volk auf äh, die Funktionäre in Bern oder sogar nach Brüssel. The Swiss government, a four-party grand coalition, which has ruled since 1959 in a consensus-style government, has applied for full EC membership and sees the European Economic Area as just another step along the road to full integration. I don't think it's uh, something very new. The Swiss integration policy is uh, quite steady for years. There, were always, uh, there is always the, the will of my government to, uh, to get rid of discrimination of uh, Swiss economy in the European market and also to take uh, note and react to uh, major changes, major changes in uh, the political environment of uh, Europe. The government, aware that there's a great deal of unease and confusion in the minds of the Swiss people, have opened up a telephone line with staff trained specially to answer public concerns. Europa Telecom, Pelloni Mattia, good to talk. Good to talk. I have a question about the pension. Over 300 calls a day come in, covering such issues as pensions, rights of residents, and bizarre queries such as whether or not the traditional Swiss dried meat Bundnerfleisch will be banned. While the government is pushing ahead with integration, the country is split over the issue, mainly along language lines. The French-speaking western part of Switzerland, which aligns itself culturally to Paris, is more pro-Europe, while the eastern-speaking German regions are anti, saying the country has been successful in the past, so why change things now? David Tapuri is co-chairman of the world's largest electrical engineering company, Asia Brown Bovary, and he leads the Yes to the EEA campaign. He believes that the French-speaking part of the country is setting the pace, but the Swiss Germans are following. The German part of Switzerland is also moving in this direction, maybe a little bit more slowly, and I think eventually we'll all get there. I think the French Swiss are a little bit more advanced in, uh, in uh, pushing for this. The Swiss Germans are more prudent. That is a very, uh, that's a very good quality. We need prudence, and we, the Swiss-French, uh, we are th sometimes thankful for this prudence, but I think eventually we'll all get there. Well, it may have something to do with uh, the uh, newest history or the latest history. In fact, the uh, German-speaking part of Switzerland, for uh, understandable reasons, had uh, a motive to set itself aside from its German-speaking neighbor for uh, a number of decades due to what happened in Germany. This is, of course, not true uh, in France or the French-speaking part. So uh, there is less of a, well, hesitancy, I would say, on the part of our French confeder confederates to identify with their French neighbors than there is in the German-speaking part. Perhaps it's no surprise, then, that the most vociferous opponent of European integration is a Swiss-German. 
industrialist and Member of Parliament Christoph Blocher heads a group called the Association for an Independent and Neutral Switzerland, which has mounted a steady campaign for a no vote to the EEA referendum over the last few months. He says the treaty is unworthy of a free people. Die Schweiz als ein kleines Land ist äh, immer gut gefahren, wenn wir etwas Besonderes waren, eine eigene Politik hatten, eine bessere Politik, ein besseres Steuerrecht. Und wenn wir das Gleiche haben wie die EG, dann werden wir nicht mehr, äh, nicht mehr eine eigene Politik haben können und dann werden die Schweizer ärmer werden. Da bin ich überzeugt. Dr. Blocker finds a solid bed of support among Switzerland's 93,000 farmers. They're particularly hot under the collar about the European economic area. Although the treaty would not affect them directly, as agricultural policy is not tackled, they fear it leading to full membership of the European community, which would inevitably lead to a severe cut in their subsidies and destroy a way of life going back generations. Also, the die, die Meinung allgemein is wahrscheinlich the same Meinung, wie ich vertrete tun dass wir einfach nicht können verstehen, wieso unser Parlamentarier, unser Bundesrat und alle hochstehenden Stellen sich so schwärmen jetzt für EWR und TG. Und wir, wir meinen einfach, wir sollten in der Schweiz noch zehn Blocher haben, die dann wirklich unser Problem können vertreten und das durchkämpfen. Und wir hoffen nur, dass er jetzt bei seiner Kampagne großen Erfolg hat. Also wir würden ihn und tun ihn sehr groß unterstützen. Swiss farmers receive 3.2 billion Swiss francs in direct subsidies according to the Swiss Farmers Union. But the Paris-based OECD puts the total cost of subsidies at 7.5 billion francs. Mountain farmers receive about two-thirds of their income in subsidies, which explains why they can raise livestock on such steep slopes. The high rate of state aid is based on Switzerland's desire to be able to produce all of its own food if necessary, as it tried to do during the Second World War. The emergency food plan still exists today. Mountain farmers would see any change in the level of benefits as catastrophic and view what is happening to other European farmers with great trepidation. Landwirtschaft in the other countries is not good. What is the problem? Tiefer Preis und man hört jeden Tag am Fernsehen und am Radio, dass Überproduktion und Preise sind tief und wir können nicht mehr so existieren. But the director of the Swiss Farmers Union is anxious to stress that joining the European Economic Area is not the same as joining the European Community. Also die Bauern haben noch Mühe, das zu verstehen, weil jedes Mal dann, wenn wir von Europa sprechen, die Bauern äh, an die Situation der Regebauern denken. Und die ist im Vergleich zur schweizerischen Situation sehr schlecht. Wir müssen also noch sehr viel arbeiten, um die Bauern darauf aufmerksam zu machen und auch davon zu überzeugen, dass eben EWR nicht EG-Beitritt ist. Und ich glaube, wir müssen vor allem den Bauern sagen, dass ohne EWR ein Opfer einseitig zu Lasten der Bauern vorprogrammiert ist. Switzerland produces about three quarters of its own food and operates a protective policy to prevent its markets being swamped by cheap imports and to ensure a continued livelihood for its food growers. For example, when Swiss strawberries are ready, foreign and cheaper strawberries are taken off the market until the Swiss strawberry season is finished. The cost of food is so high here, even in the street markets, that many Swiss cross the borders to shop in neighbouring cheaper EC countries. For the consumer, Swiss high food prices provide one good argument for closer economic relations with Europe. The Swiss determination to be self-sufficient and to protect its own interests is at the core of the debate on closer European ties. One of Switzerland's longest held beliefs, and one of the prime reasons for its stability and the ability to hold this diverse nation together is neutrality backed up by a 600,000 strong army. Switzerland has been de facto neutral since 1515, and 300 years later, in 1815, this neutrality was officially recognized at the Congress of Vienna. Der 
schweizerische Grenzschutz bezieht zum ersten Mal kriegsmäßig seine Stellungen, um seine Aufgabe, Sicherung der Mobilmachung der gesamten Armee gegen plötzlichen Überfall zu erfüllen. Switzerland cannot participate directly in wars or to provide any side with troops or weapons. But, as in World War II, it's duty bound to protect its own territory with an adequate army, a considerable cost to the Swiss taxpayer. But this neutrality would be questioned if Switzerland were to move to full European integration. Certain areas of the country resemble a nation at war, as Switzerland's part-time soldiers do their compulsory military stint of about three weeks a year. The army is not only a defending force, but a glue that holds together the social fabric. Doctors, lawyers and businessmen carry out their military training together, and it's well known that a high ranking in the army has until now gone hand in glove with a successful career. But while the army serves as a uniting force within Switzerland, the neutrality it is meant to defend has been questioned even within the ranks. I think we should make a difference between neutral and independent. I think neutrality is more a question of a historical question, and to stay neutral, that's not really honest if we if you look what really happens around Switzerland. A recent government commission says that the cornerstones of Switzerland's foreign policy are no longer best served by the maintenance of permanent neutrality. Swiss neutrality was always important in the east-west confrontation. We try to be between the blocks. There is no more east-west confrontation. That's one the most important changes. The second change is, for example, 1990 in the Gulf War. For the first time in history, the security system of the United Nations worked. And if you have such a functioning security system, you don't need any more neutrality. But Switzerland won't part easily with neutrality, which forms a considerable part of its national identity. This country has been built upon the concept of neutrality and being outside the large powers. And in fact, over the last 180 years of Europe's unhappy history, Switzerland has fared well in staying outside alliances and claiming, not only claiming, but in fact being independent and autonomous, a sovereign nation. So it is very difficult to see that today we probably have to part with these concepts because these concepts are hollow these days. They have become emptied from their old contents. Switzerland has one of the highest standards of living in the world due to its reliance on producing high quality goods and services. Having emerged unscathed from World War II, it was able to build on its prosperous productive base and expand its markets for prestige products throughout the world. But there are growing fears that the country's industry is becoming uncompetitive and its traditional markets are being eroded as the country finds itself in the middle of a recession. Some believe that this highlights the need for joining a broader European market. Uh, Switzerland is on the outside looking into a very large market, mm -hmm. the largest market in the world. And of course, it is going to be discriminated against by this market uh, extending preferential treatment to their uh, individual neighbors. So it is like in marriage. If you marry a person, you're discriminating everybody else who is outside the marriage. And Switzerland is outside this marriage. In fact, Switzerland already has close trade ties with the European community, widely exporting the products for which it's famous. The EC is Switzerland's largest trading partner. But if Switzerland chooses to remain outside the European economic area, it would have to rely on continued goodwill to increase its access to this wider trading bloc. With time, I think there will be very, there would be very grave consequences. I think economically, we would eventually become less competitive. We would have less access to, to our main market, which is the European market. That would not mean, I think, that we would gain more access to extra European markets. So economically, I think we would uh, slide into a slow erosion of our competitiveness. And I think politically, we would get into isolation. I think politically, uh, we would get into a situation where people wouldn't understand us anymore at a time when it is very important to cooperate in Europe. Aber die Frage ist, es ist die Grundfrage ist, ob die Schweiz noch stark genug ist, genug Vitalität hat, genug, äh, genug Kampfgeist auch, um 
allein außerhalb zu bestehen? Das ist die Grundfrage. Die Politiker sagen bereits, nein, wir haben keine Kraft mehr. Das, das, das können wir nicht. Und wir werden isoliert sein und wir werden diskriminiert werden und, und wir werden Nachteile haben und die Ege wird uns äh, und nicht mehr beachten. Das ist äh, Defetismus, nicht? Das ist, äh, das ist keine Kraft mehr. Uncertainty about the state of the Swiss economy was fueling worries that if border controls are removed, Switzerland will be overrun by foreigners, seeking to benefit from high salaries and an enviable standard of living. Switzerland borders five European countries, and there's growing unease that immigrant workers would arrive in large numbers to compete in the already diminishing job market. At 3%, Switzerland now has its highest ever level of unemployment. Foreigners already make up 17% of the population, and some would not welcome the consequences of a greater influx. Wenn wir mehr Ausländer bekommen, dann werden wir den Vorteil haben, das sage ich jetzt sofort, dass der Lohn natürlich, das Lohnniveau wird sinken. Aber es gibt mehr Arbeitslose, das sind, das sind Probleme. Wir haben einen sehr angespannten Wohnungsmarkt heute. Das, das, das gibt, braucht mehr Wohnungen und das gibt, gibt steigende Mieten. Es gibt auch Spannungen, wenn Sie viele Ausländer haben und die eigenen Leute dann keine Arbeit mehr finden. Well, these fears uh, would seem to be justified, wouldn't they? Because obviously a country uh, like Switzerland is attractive uh, for others as well, not only for tourists, but also, I, I think, for uh, the labor force. On the other hand, the European experience points in quite a different direction. Take uh, the inflow, say, from Spain or Portugal or southern Italy to northern Europe. Looking just at wage differentials, one would assume to have all of southern Italy or half of southern Italy's population up in northern Germany or in uh, the, the Netherlands or in the North European countries in general. Nothing of this sort has happened. The arguments in favor of tighter relations with Europe seem to be convincing many voters. Earlier this year, in a test of goodwill towards Europe, Switzerland gave the green light to a multi-billion franc rail transport scheme called NEART. The scheme is designed to help Switzerland's European partners move goods back and forth across the Alps. Straddling the main north-south axis of Europe, Switzerland has in recent years severely restricted the flow of heavy trucks crossing its mountain passes because of concern for the fragile alpine environment. But after intense pressure from Brussels, Switzerland proposed the Neart scheme, whereby trucks will be stopped at the border and piggybacked by rail through two enormous alpine tunnels and offloaded at the other end. With a 64% majority, the Swiss voted to cooperate with Europe. The government succeeded in quelling fears that the country's high environmental standards would suffer if it bowed to European pressure, pointing out that Switzerland could become a role model for environmentally sensitive transportation. I feel that the other countries, Germany, France, and Italy, and uh, Austrian too, uh, will be encouraged by the Swiss decision to also look for a transfer in their own countries from the road to the rail because people are making pressure on the authorities to avoid uh, too, too much pollution. While the NAIAP vote was a victory for the pro-Europe lobby, critics say that the very process by which the scheme was agreed, the referendum, will be threatened by joining Europe. Each year the Swiss vote on an average of four times in national referendums, where all constitutional and many legal changes have to be put to the popular vote. A majority of the cantons and a majority of voters are needed for any changes to be passed. This continual voting in a process known as direct democracy has led to voter fatigue among the electorate. But nevertheless, people feel that they have direct control over their affairs. Closer European ties would whittle away this process of direct democracy, a concept fundamental to the Swiss mentality. It will be affected to some extent. I mean, there will be less issues which will be subject to, to direct democratic uh, procedures. This will be a very slow, tendential process. A vast majority of uh, objects will still be subject to direct democratic processes. But you see, this again will be one of those changes. And uh, the cantons in Switzerland have seen uh, changes in the way their subjects were dealt with more and more by the federal state in Switzerland. And so we might go through through a similar revolution in Europe. 
The vote on the 6th of December will be an historic one, as Switzerland decides if its future lies in an integrated Europe or whether it can afford to go it alone. There will be no end of the world, but it will be much more difficult. And I would foresee economically, but also politically, difficult times, times of isolation, times where Swiss companies would leave Switzerland, where jobs would disappear. Uh, I do not want to uh, make afraid people, but uh, I think uh, this uh, starts to be a realistic, uh, realistic vision of the future without the EEA. We are only a different people. Und die finden einfach der Schweizer Volk, wo so sparsam sind ist bis jetzt und so fließig und wirklich zu etwas gebracht hat, das sollte einfach wieder jetzt den Mumm aufbringen und einfach sagen, wir bleiben allein und wir schaffen das ganz sicher allein. In the long run, say over the next 50 years or so, Switzerland would choose to continue to stay outside the rest of Europe. Uh, it couldn't uh, do it without doing harm to its highly uh, uh, comfortable existence. Ich wäre traurig, wenn die Schweiz ja sagen würde, weil ich sage, gut, die Schweiz gibt jetzt ihre Unabhängigkeit und Selbstständigkeit langsam aber sicher auf und wir können ja nicht mehr zurück, nicht? Der Bundesrat sagt, man kann den Vertrag kündigen und man kann wieder raus, wenn es schlecht geht. Das wird international so große Komplikationen bringen, dass wir das nicht äh, können. Well, that's what many people are afraid of. They're afraid that uh, Switzerland as Switzerland is going to disappear. And it's funny, I just, don't, uh, I just don't believe that. And I don't believe that uh, change, you know, makes you disappear. I think it's quite the opposite in life. Change is what, what preserves you. And status quo is always the only option which leads to, to you to disappear eventually. So I think... Uh, Switzerland has proved in its history that um, we needed to change, and we've had some revolutionary changes in, in Swiss history. And I think we are again in one of those periods. And um, I don't know how we are going to be or feel or look in 20, 30, 50 years, but we're still going to be uh, us, you know. So I very much believe we need to be forward-looking, and that's how we're going to remain Swiss. Whatever the outcome of the forthcoming referendum, the issue of Europe will not disappear. The Swiss will have to reconsider whether to remain forever divided from a united Europe or whether to come in from the cold.